Hey people, cool that you're back. Um, we want to look into high-speed Rust today. That means we check how to benchmark your code and which cool little tricks you can do to optimize speed. So we will look into, yeah, we will compare indexing with iterators. We will see how we can optimize iterators and also how to use SIMD in Rust. Um, yeah, there's the internal benchmarking tool that's really cool because like you write a test, yeah, here I test all the functions that they give the expected result. You can also run the benchmark in the same file and just say bench here at the top. But this only works in nightly Rust yet, so you have to activate um, the nightly feature test. <clears throat> in Rust, um, in nightly Rust, stuff is behind feature gates, so you don't have to use everything that is unstable, um, but can opt in. So we use the feature test here, and test gives us this test crate that you also have to call here, and then you can use this bencher. Yeah, you see that's test bencher and also test black box. Um, the B bencher here provides you this iterator. In this iterator, you just give the actual stuff you want to benchmark. And before you can do some preparation, like um, here we allocate a vector of 240,000 elements, and then we fill it with random data from the rent crate. All right, that's basically it. Yeah, there's not much more to know. Um, the black box is uh, sometimes necessary because the compiler could say, hey, no one is using the sum that we created here. So I just optimize it away and then you get a wrong result. Um, in this case, yeah, it's not optimized away, so it doesn't make a difference if you have this black box, but just stick to it. Don't be lazy and then you are ensure uh, that you will get a correct result. All right, um, to switch to nightly Rust, I would recommend just doing this Rust toolchain or Tommy file and add this. You can also say um, Rust up default nightly, or you can say cargo plus nightly bench or something like this. Um, to install nightly, you have to call Rust up install nightly, and this will give you the newest nightly toolchain. What else is there? Let's now not go into criterion yet. We do that afterwards. That's um, an external benchmarking tool that gives you a little bit more reliable results, especially in taller projects, um, and generates HTML reports with regression and so on. But um, yeah, for now, we just stick to, to this for, um, to make it a bit simpler. So let's focus first on what we want to build. We have this uh, sum function that um, gets just any kind of uh, data slice and then just iterates over it and adds all the elements together in this sum here. We return the sum so the caller can get it. Yeah, in this tests you see, I'll just check that um, the expected result is coming out and in the benchmarks there you saw already how we provide this vector. So I call it this naive version because I think it's uh, it's a quite nice solution. Uh, you see what happens very nice by iterating like this over an, over an array, and uh, there is no bounce checking um, or at least no manual one and no um, yeah no indexing. So it's a quite safe solution. Let's see how fast this runs. Mm. It's, you can run it with cargo, bench, and then just say the name of the, uh, of the benchmark you want to run. So it's this name you have to choose. Bench, some naive. Let's run it. So you see it takes 520 microseconds to run this um, to run this benchmark on average. So it, it's running it a couple of times. It chooses um, the benchmark suit, it chooses itself how often it runs. And um, yeah, here you see the standard deviation, I think. So um, how much uh, spread is in there in the data set. But yeah, 520 
microseconds. That's not very fast for 240,000 F64 values. And that's the first mistake that some people are doing. Um, yeah, I tricked you now. Benchmarks, um, for benchmarks, you don't have to care about this usually. But if you, pro if you build your project and you test it, sometimes people complain that it's slow. And in Rust, uh, you have to build stuff in release mode to make it fast. Yeah? So if you just run cargo build, it will be run in development mode. You see dev profile, unoptimized and debug info. And if you run it in release mode, then you actually get the optimized version that is fast. So now um, I was just running this in development mode. Yeah, um, what you, you, Usually benchmarks run automatically in release mode. I just went here. Sorry, I went here and um, said profile bench inherits dev. Yeah, so now I was using the optimizations of the dev profile. Let's just remove that and run it again. So we run in release mode. Now it compiles again because it's a different, um, yeah, it's a different setting. And now we see we have 85 microseconds. So that's much, much, much better than development build. All right. Yeah. So the first thing you should care in re in yeah, giving your software away or testing your software. So then let's check the second function, sum index. Uh, here I just use manual indexing. Yeah, so we iterate over just numbers from zero to the length of the of the data object, and then we index in it. And indexing could be slower because there is bounce checking each time you index into the data object to make sure we are still inside. Yeah, I mean, this is a manual process, so you could easily, uh, if I would do this, we would overflow, yeah, and then it would, um, it would fail. So let's run this, it should fail now, yeah. Um, index out of bounds. So you see there's this manual bound checking. Um, but let's see if that actually hits performance. No, it's pretty much the same. Yeah, also 85 microseconds. And that's because the compiler can also optimize this away sometimes, yeah, this, um, this indexing. Then um, I wanted to go into const indexing. Actually, here I want to change something just to make it uh, not show up too early. Uh, const indexing just means we provide a constant that's known, a constant in Rust is known at compile time. So the compiler definitely knows how often this for loop will run and has the chance to unroll it. And in some complex cases, this can really help wonders. So you will be much faster. Let's see how that, uh, I'll just fix the code again. Let's see how we run this. That's um, some const index and then you have to provide a number, how often you actually want to run it. Um, let's fix this here as well. I changed it. Uh, yeah, and here you see I provide the length. Yeah, that's why I made it like this with a constant because only then it works. Yeah, if you have um, a normal let variable, then you couldn't use it inside of here. So definitely makes things uh, com more complicated. You cannot use this function everywhere, but um, sometimes it can have performance. So let's see what is happening. Some const index. Oh, there's the, here I still didn't fix the test, sorry for that. But you see, there's no difference. Yeah, it's still 85 microseconds. So it doesn't really help in this, uh, in this case, in this easy case. Sometimes it can though. So test it. Mm. Then there is um, this iter iterator sum. So that's really cool because, I mean, how concise can it be? And iterators can sometimes be even faster than just doing it manual. So let's check how this performs. And it's still 85 microseconds. So there's no real difference. Um, 
Yeah, uh, try it, test it, because sometimes this can help. But now let's check out optimized iter. So why is it optimized? What do I do here? I provide chunk sizes and we actually go through the data chunk by chunk. So this chunks exact function will just give you the first 16 elements and the next 16 and the next 16. Um, and then we build the sum over 16 elements each and afterwards the sum over all those um, chunk sums. Yeah, makes it a bit more complicated. You also have to think about it a bit, but um, sometimes that can help. Yeah, it depends. You have to test it, and also the, choosing the chunk size makes a difference. Yeah, it depends a bit on your architecture or your CPU, how much SIMD it can handle. But this helps the compiler um, to know. Okay, I have those blocks, and they are always the same, um, and maybe. Yeah, hit let that auto vectorization hits a bit better. In this assertion, I just check that the chunk size um, or that the data length is dividable by the chunk size because we don't handle the remainder here. Yeah, so you can also uh, use chunks, which gives you a remainder, but it makes it a bit more complicated. So I'll just stick into this use case here. Um, let's run it. Yeah, we are 85 at some meter. Let's see how that changes. Twenty three, twenty two, twenty three. That is suddenly a big step. Yeah, it was always eighty five, and now we are at twenty three. That is insane. So yeah, obviously, doing this helps a lot. Yeah, now we can play around with the chunk sizes, so see if that improves or get getting worse. Oh yeah, that's even a bit better, 22. Um, let's check out uh, 1, yeah, which is basically like before. And you see here, yeah, now it's taken 85. And also if you go higher, for example, 32, um, it gets a bit higher again, yeah, so it gets worse. So the optimum here was at 8. 22, so let's stick to that. Yeah, but that is um, the cool thing is nothing here is at compile time, so you can even check a bit, uh, yeah, where you're running or in which use case you are and change this chunk size dynamically. Um, and lastly, yeah, that's the thing for real experts here that is SIMD, single input multiple data. That is, yeah, that is what, what is happening here as well, but this is not, uh, we don't have direct control over it. And that just means we, um, yeah, we are a level lower and we have those SIMD objects that have a constant um, size of, um, yeah, this, this chunk size is basically the same. And um, those SIMD objects can be added and so on. Yeah, there are multiple math operations on it. You can check out um, here the SIMD module in the standard library and you will find more information. Here is, for example, um, yeah, here, here are some, some functions and some help to it. So what do I do? Yeah, we choose SIMD size 16. Then we call here this split function on the SIMD object. And split just um, fills in every slot of this SIMD object with the same number. So here's zero. Uh, so it looks, uh, then the SIMD lo object looks a bit like this. Yeah. And then we call the same function, chunks exact, but this time with, the, uh, with this SIMD size. And here we can just um, add. Yeah, we create a new SIMD object from the chunk and then just add it to our sum. So then we always add 16 values at a time. And at the end, you still have to reduce the sum. That just means uh, we end up with uh, 16 values yeah, that are our individual sums. So we still have to sum all of them together. And this will just uh, provide this. Let's test it. Let's see if we can make it faster with all this hustle here. Oops, I removed the bench. 
and we add 13 microseconds. So that's a big step, yeah, from 23, 22 to 13. Also here we could play around with the SIMD size. Um, let's see if eight helps. Eight makes it a bit worse actually. Uh, let's see if 32 helps. Also here it's a bit worse. Yeah? So here the sweet spot seems to be 16. Yeah, that seems to be good. Cool. So yeah, actually sometimes doing this work here pays out a lot. So we went down from 85 microseconds to 13 or 14. That's a big step. You don't have to do it everywhere. Yeah, please don't start your code like this. It just makes it not readable. It's annoying. It's error prone. Start like this. Yeah. And look, if you have an iterator function or some, some indexing like this, but uh, then see in, the, in your total program what takes the most time, which is run the most often, and optimize those parts Yeah, if the performance is not enough. Yeah, I hope you learned something. One thing that I still wanted to show you is criterion. Because this here can be, yeah, first you have to use nightly and then it can be a bit um, unreliable for large um, functions. And criterion, you just add it here as a dev dependency. So it's not built into your actual program that you release. You have to provide a benchmark like this. That's just an array. So you have you can have multiple of those and this has to be the same name as this file here in benches sum and yeah here's some boilerplate code you can copy this from uh, the criterion uh, crates io page uh, here's this boilerplate and then just fill in your functions it's exactly the same you have this bencher that has an iterator and also here's the black box yeah so it works identical but just if we run this benchmark, um, some naive, you will see there's a warm up happening, warming up for three seconds. And now it's collecting 100 samples out of 61,000 iterations that it thinks are valuable. And then you get the time and it's also a bit better formatted. So you see it directly in milliseconds or microseconds, what fits best. And um, you have, uh, you see if it changed. So now it's running this benchmark. Yeah, it also run, was running the other one. Um, so if you now change your function a bit, yeah, you see if it improved or got worse. So here you see it's now 0.4% faster, but this change is within the noise threshold. So that's really powerful, it's really cool. Um, you get a bit more information, but also they run longer. That's why I, I was showing it now with this other benchmarking tool. And uh, you also, in the target criterion folder, you get some more information with uh, um, JSON files with all the uh, iteration values. So you see the maximum and minimum, and you also get this report um, open and default app. You also get this report of um, yeah the statistics and usually there are even uh, pictures inside. Maybe you have to activate the HTML report feature for that. All right, yeah, that's uh, basically all. I hope you're not afraid anymore of SIMD. It is not that complicated, but yeah, you have to adapt your algorithm sometimes. Yeah, see you next time. Bye-bye.